of these two will face either Mark Fleming or Jack Whelan. John Kelsey breaks off and breaks off very, very well, but he's not been left a first shot. How do you like those in the big match? Steve Jameson, Tony Holgate with you for this one. And a really interesting semi final lineup, I think, Tony. We've got two fantastic players here in which there's no. No massive surprises that these two are, are in the final four of a big event. But when you've got uh, a fantastic run from Mark Fleming, I think fair to say a, a bit of a surprise package for the weekend. But what a fantastic run for him to put it together. Yeah, well, I was lucky enough to um, commentate on Mark Fleming's game in the quarter final, And wow, he did play brilliantly. And, it, and it's in contrast because early in, in the competition, I did, I did the commentary when, he, when his brother Ryan was playing and he was having a really bad day at the office. But it's nice for the family that Mark sort of found his form and he's playing ever so well. Jack Whelan also, he had a struggle on, on event seven. Yeah. And, and I spoke to him earlier and he, he's still not convinced he's playing particularly well, but he's still there. And, uh, and again, somebody with, who's just a tremendous player, he's got a fantastic break. And if he gets that going, then, well, they could all be in trouble. Well, he, he, put, on, he put together a phenomenal performance against Neil Rayburn in the quarter-final where Neil Rayburn had one of those matches that can appear every now and then where he doesn't actually do anything wrong in open table. When he came to the table, he cleared up. He just didn't get to the table very often. His breaks let him down. And a very, very quick 7-3 win for Jack Whelan. And he's just starting to heat up a little bit. John McAllister had a strange match against Dom Cooney. I did that one about couple of hours ago now and it was a very uncharacteristic sort of John McAllister performance didn't look confident for much of it and tried to be a little bit too perfect sometimes and would force himself to play difficult shots land perfect on balls that sometimes he could have just landed on and, and made them but he got through and hopefully that sort of settled him a little bit into this semi-final yeah, he's, um, he's a terrific shot maker. Um, I was on his game when he played Craig Waddingham uh, in an earlier match, and he was fantastic against him. But I suppose, does your mind change from opponent to opponent? I, was, I guess it can do. Um, like Jordan Shepard, I mean, in event seven, he, he was fantastic. He beat Tom Cousins in the quarters. Uh, gets the semi-final against Chris Mellin, just never turned up. Yeah. So I think that might be conscious in his mind in this event. He's now he's played really, really well this morning. Uh, well, you've got to give him a lot of credit. I mean, to go back-to-back oh. -back semi-finals, even you know, even if he were to lose here against Sean McCarthy, it's still a fantastic weekend for him. But I heard him speak to to Simon a little bit earlier on. He said he had the file under him a little bit, that he was sort of due a bit of a performance, and he's uh, he's seeking something from this frame. He's got a lot of work to do to get it though. It's a miss from John a moment ago, but he still had a lot of currency in the frame. shoppy has gone some way to chipping away at that. How much further he goes though is up in the air because that red just the other side of the yellow from the cue ball is a real problem for him. Yeah, at the moment I'll be happy to be on yellows but he might try and develop it now if he's if he can hit this thin enough. I'm not, I'm not sure he could. He, the only other way he could play this is play this into the middle and scream the cue ball over to the left-hand side rail and then try and smash in that way, but he's, he's going with the more measured approach. The other way, he's be played a red off the yellow into the corner. Yeah. Pop, pops it out there. It, that shot looks on, but it looks on from one camera angle and looks not on from the other camera yeah. angle. It's, it Which can is be where deceiving. the yellow is, where the yeah. knuckle is. But, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's where the plan is now because of, of where he's put yeah, himself. Yeah, agreed. And he's right behind that shot now. The Just like a little him. bit more angle, though, Stephen, wouldn't he? Yeah. He'd love to be a little bit further across because he's got to land on the red, of course. It's all well and good making the pocket free for it, but he's got to land on it. That'll do. Well, Ish. Ish. It's, it's a feasible pot. He would have liked just a couple more inches there, but he had to play it so hard there to try and force a cue ball across. I don't think he's going for it. Well, that's a clever shot. Yeah, he doesn't want to be touching ball. Touching ball. Ah, there it is. Not so such a clever shot then. Yeah, but John's got a... It's a difficult shot for John to play. He can just pot Jordan's red here, which will be 
the first part of the shot, but then it's hiding the cue ball, and he can't. I don't think he gets the center. It can he get it back behind the yellow. I think that's the only way he can play it. Unless he's just going to try and nudge it over to the side, to the side rail. Up and down. Does yeah, he? I think you've got a fancy Jordan for this shot. It's difficult, but just the angle because you, if you try and play that with with left hand side, it you either get nothing or you get too much and miss it completely. Because you, you very you you going very close to the jaw of the corner. Tough tough shot. What a played shot! Played that brilliantly. What a shot! That's unlucky. How's that not gone in? We've seen we've seen plenty of shots drop in at that angle this weekend. With that cue ball coming down the table, I'd, I'd had a couple of quid on that going into the yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like you say, it, you know, it's quite generous that pocket as well. well at, yeah, through absolutely. The weekend, yeah, I'm, right? I'm <coughs> very surprised that's missed. I think Sheppy is. Well, this looks A1. Well, unless the lighting frame all falls down on top of John McAllister's head, I can't see him missing these. <laughs> yeah, never rule anything out. But, yeah, it would be a ginormous shock for John not to knock these through. And he will go 1-0 in front. Sheppy had his chance, tough as it was. Nearly made it count. John McAllister, at the second time of asking, gets the job done. And then the second women's semi final will be on table number three. Sheppy on the cut break. Does mess around a bit with his break. Jordan Shepard, he can really mix it up. He's very, very unfaithful to, to his break as soon as it starts going wrong he'll switch instantly he did it he did it this morning he, he <laughs> wasn't breaking from the cut break he was he was he was plowing through the front ball yeah i don't think I'd, i don't think i can name another player on the tour who is so chop and change i think sheffy's got a great first break but he, he in terms of the front ball but as soon as he feels like it's not really working for him it's just a feeling thing he'll ju he'll just go Talking about the breaks, Christophe Lambert all this week when he's when he when he suffered his defeats, they've all been through dry breaks. And there's a player there that is so precise where he puts a cue ball and addresses his break shot, and he never changes. Yeah, he he stood on event seven and had five dry breaks on the trot and never once changed his break. Yeah, and it, I really respect that because ultimately that is. That is how you want to be as a player, isn't it? You want to be, you want to control what you can control. Do the same thing every time and trust. You know, you're leaving it up to the gods in a way, but as long as you do your thing, that is essentially all you can do. And yeah, that I mean, that's brutal for Christoph, isn't it? He looks to have been in great touch this weekend as well because he's had some phenomenal wins. Well, he was he was a winner here at the um, at the last the weekend, pro, yeah. Pro Series six, wasn't he? His yeah, one of them, five or six. Yeah, I think it was six, the second one. It was a Sunday night. I remember yeah. Simon Webb alluding to it, said this, when he went out of this one, it said, if this was a defence, this was the defence of his, yeah. his title back in June. Yeah, and it was it was a fantastic win for Christoph that. And it's no surprise to really see him sort of in that elite conversation. Uh, Sheppy just goes awry here. He's got a real shot to play. Well, I think that Regis came up and knocked his cue ball back out the way. He, he planned the way he wanted it to be, and he's, the, the Reds come back up because he did it a little bit thick and and jolted him back out of position. Is he going yellow off the yellow here? He is indeed. He is. What a shot. Brilliant Lovely. shot. Lovely. Brilliant shot. And if he can avoid the red towards that side rail, just bounce the cue ball out. Off the left side cushion. Well, the pot's no problem, Steve. It's the it's the position onto the yeah. black. There's, there's stuff that can go wrong here. He couldn't avoid the reds, but he's had a touch, I think. Well, this is very thin. He's lucky to get any shot at all. Unless um, he goes across. Does he go across the table and plays it off the rail? Your guess is as good as mine. He's going for the cut. Oh, mate, that looks simple. I want wow to go and watch yeah. one of her exhibitions if she's playing those shots. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay a couple of quid a ticket. 
What a shot. Complete fluke, of course, but you take those all day long. Dry break from McAllister. Just look at the yellows for Jordan Shepard. John looks at the table in disgust. I'll tell you what, he could even take reds. I, I, I think he's got a choice of both sets. Yeah, John McAllister, speaking of the breaks, is another one who has that sort of... He's got his own patented break, doesn't he? He does the same thing every single time. He's a fantastic breaker, is John. But it was the one thing that sort of let him down a little bit against, against Dom Cooney. It wasn't consistent and... Yeah, he wasn't. It was strange. He won. He won an Ultimate Pool Pro Series quarterfinal. You got the sense he was just so delighted to be out of there and <laughs> have that match over. Well, Jordan's in plum position. The Welsh wizard. And John McAllister looks on. Yeah, these two have had plenty of ding dongs over the years. I bet, yeah. Nice control there from Shepard. Just plotting his route around these yellows to which one to leave the angle to come down for the black ball. Just come far enough there. Played an awful lot of pool over the course this weekend, Jordan Shepard with two semi final runs, and it's been the one thing that he's struggled with this year, he struggled to play a lot of pool. His previous four tournaments, he's had first round exits in the Pro Series this season. And all of a sudden, he gets a chance to put a run together and he shows us how good he can be. He's been very good today, that's for sure. And he's nothing to do with this here. Just drop this into the middle. Black will go into the other centre. But I suppose for Sheppy, when he's he's sort of mixing and matching a lot of different Q sports, obviously he's got his, his snooker uh, commitments going on. He's been over in China playing the, the Chinese eight ball events, and there's no animosity really there at all. It's it's not it's not that kind of environment. But there will be an element of champs going well. You know, I I'm I'm the ultimate pool number one, and yes, you're the world champion, but you're you're in my house now. Exactly. Exactly. Who is this imposter in my living room? <laughs> uh, Sheffy with a bit of a shake of his head there. Not too sure why, because at first glance these, these seem all right. Well, you'd be grateful for that. Any, any time you break your pot of ball, you think, well, if, if everything's open, it's got nothing to really move out. Well, nothing at all to move out. Just wants to get behind this red into that centre pocket, right behind it. Doesn't want to be a long way away. He's going to have to play it very slow. He's going to move it. Wow, what a good shot that was. Yeah. I don't think I'd have even bothered. I'd, I'd think I'd, I'd have just played to just get on to just drop it in, but that made it a little bit easier now. <laughs> Quite well, a lot easier. I mean, much more presentable part. Shots developed. It was tough though. He executed it really well. He's always a prone to a mover, Jordan Shepard. If he can go into something, he usually does. He's got a tiny little angle on his red on the left. He's just going to bump into the other red and push it towards the right-hand corner, like so. And then he'll just pop this red, drop round the back of those two yellows a little bit, right-hand side, black in the top left. I don't think you want a little bump there. He won't be too bothered. No, a little grimace there from Jordan Sheffield. I think what? he was trying to avoid it. I think he was expected a bit more of a slide off that rail. Yeah, agreed. But there it goes. Sheffy rattles off another one. He hasn't, I don't, well, he hasn't got up since, has he? So last I'll time put he him in the chair for two frames. Yeah, that's the last time he touched the table. And he's kicked it off. Can be a tough place to be at times. You can see Sheffy's locked in, though. He's a, you know, in the... <laughs> you know that phrase for like football managers on the touchline where they're sort of they're kicking every ball. Yes, it, it, you can see him there as he comes to the table. He's sort of nodding for balls to bounce off rails, and he's he's really zoned in. Yeah, he did it actually for the yellow and the red over the middle. Yeah. There. He, want, he wanted to make sure there's room for that yellow to go past, but he's he's still pondering which ones to take. 
Yeah, it was like watching Alex Ferguson on the bench when a corner used to come in and he used to do the yeah. pretend header. <laughs> 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 As you can tell, Sheppy's locked and loaded. Fired up for this one. Well, he need to get a move on. Never a problem for the Welsh Wizard. No. <laughs> Not often we have to say he's got to get a move on. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh, the, well, the, the time he used up there was just decided red or yellow, I think, because yeah. they're all, they're all um, very inviting. We talked in the last round about he can be a bit of a, a bit of a sort of impulsive mover of balls. I just wonder if this time he'll, he'll keep the red where it is. It's tough to tell from this angle, but I'm pretty sure you can land behind it and drop it in. Well, he doesn't want it to be his last ball, does he? Judging where the eight ball is. Well, you wouldn't cause imagine so. Because you don't want to be playing out of pace into that middle. Absolutely not. And what you see now, he's just looking at his angle. He's going to drop this into the centre. Well, the black will go into the bottom right-hand corner. So I guess he's just going to play a plain ball. And sort of maybe a little bit left-hand side on the one on the cushion. And try and slide up the table. Ideal anywhere just past the left hand middle bag would be perfect for him. He's got to concentrate fully on the pot. This He's actually picked these part really well, hasn't he? That's it. It looks easy. This is a very, very good finish. Isn't it? Yeah, because you know, he's, he's had a couple of couple of dodgy shots there and positional shots. And he's yeah, but as you say, it, the, the women, the top players have all performed this weekend by and large. His break's really on at the moment, it's Jordan's. Yeah, isn't it just? But it's the splits, Steve. That, you know, that they're all... They're, they're nice every time they seem to be. You know, Which you usually can't <laughs> always yeah. say for the cut break. The amount of times you used to hammer the pack and then you'd get a couple of balls, but then there's a big cluster somewhere and you can't... You think, oh... Just one of them. Or you're not even on your first ball. That's a nightmare one. You split and you know full well now you're going to hand the table back to your opponent and you'd have to go and sit there and take your medicine. Oh, a lovely little opening shot he's played there. Just to nudge the black ball out away from that yellow. And now all the balls have pockets, but it, now it's about picking your pattern and it's it's not the easiest finish this. Is could he, could he dig that one that he's close to into the middle and screw back and nudge that yellow past the eight ball? And he didn't go for the one on the cush, but I just wondered if he could have done that he could, and he could have landed on the one at the bottom of the table as well with him doing so. But Yeah, I think there's I think the three at the bottom all sort of connect. He's looking at I think going to the one bottom right first of those three. And the one to the bottom left. He, he wants to finish fairly straight on it, I think, so he can just finish low on the yellow at the middle and he's He's got it to either the top left, maybe even the top right. Well, he'll be dispatching this yellow that's next to the red now on the left. Oh, he does like to play. <laughs> it always moves well, if he's got the shot, yeah. He'll always opt to move it. He's played it so well. I mean, you could not play that shot any better. No. That's perfect. This is as good a performance I've seen from anybody this week. Yeah, he's, he's Sheppy is absolutely flying here. These are not easy finishes he's taking out, and he is rattling through them. The confidence in him, I mean, it's a skip in his step as well, Steve. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, he's fired up. He's absolutely fired up, and at this stage for me, is as close to any of the other three as to potentially winning it, just in terms of how he's playing. Caster makes a ball, and wouldn't you know, look at those clusters. Isn't it amazing? When it's going for you, it goes for you. When it's not, how often does it not? He knew straight away, I think, as well. He had a feeling. Maybe laugh earlier, Jordan Shepard. I was speaking to him about 10 minutes before. We went to the arena and there was a player walked past that was playing. I think the challenger had a big swig of an energy drink and he said, why would you take an energy drink just before you're about to play? 
Well, I have to agree, you know, give yourself a big sugar kick with it. I mean, surely the adrenaline of, of <laughs> being out in the arena would be enough, wouldn't it? Well, this has slowed us down a bit. It has, yeah. John McCaster just selecting to take reds as the dominant colour set and then immediately drew back. A sloppy one from Sheppy. Three points to the billiards. <laughs> Won't be too much concern from Shepard, though. No, it's zero, I'd say. This is a horrible frame for John McAllister, and Shepard's 5-1 up. He is in no rush to take these on. To be honest, if Jordan Shepard and Cuba in hand encourages John McAllister to go for them, I think you're probably quite happy for him to have a go at these. The only one thing that's on John McAllister's side is the clock he's got plenty of time to get back oh in this yeah game. so it's, it's not as if you know we've seen matches where it starts to get down towards you know under 10 minutes and things and then the players will start to um use up all of their a lot of time i don't think he really knew what to do with that no that's, that's that's the definition of a nothing shot there and I, I don't judge john for that it's a very tricky layout and i think he's ultimately just decided 30 seconds wasn't enough time to work it out and no you're right and, and we'll go again that's not the yellow that Joel was going for, but he hasn't hit a cushion. Yeah, he's scraped along the side of it. So John's basically back in the same position he was a second ago. Yeah, and you essentially have a minute shot clock here, and this is where you've really got to get your, your brain working. This rule set is always sort of thought of, I think, as a, as a really hyper-attacking rule set, but actually the, the tactical side of things I always find fascinating. In a frame like this, it's... You always want to be doing something. Always be moving forward. Yeah. How can you do that? We're just trying to develop one of the reds at the bottom. Now, can he play the one that's closest to the bottom left now? Maybe just nudge the yellows a little bit. I don't think he can go into it with enough pace, though, to move the red away into a potting position. I don't know. I I'll tell you what, you can actually go game. Oh, I didn't realise this red past the bottom left, that helps. I think you know, ideally you want to be playing the red over the back now that you, you talked about, Steve. Yeah. Going in, but now he's just left himself a little bit hampered by the eight ball. Yeah, well, he's, he's now much straighter on it than he was. Well, initially I thought he was on the shot before. But he may just have to reroute here because he wants to be able to, to play it with the, the pace required to bump it out. His only issue is, if he takes this red off the table, this was his insurance ball on that shot. If he goes, oh, well, that's a, a big surprise. But, in fact, the way that he's played that, I think he's meant, yeah, I think it's the safety. I do as well. I don't think John's capable of missing a ball of that. Well, look at the cue ball. Yeah, uh, that's yeah he's not played to get on anything, is he? No, he's played to leave it at the top. So. Yeah, that's... It's a definite, deliberate <laughs> shot. We were, we were both dumbfounded looking. Yeah, that really jarred me for a second. Now, I think there's no way. Well, we both got it in our minds that he was going game. <laughs> yeah. And then he's kidded us all along. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was due to where he landed next to, next to the black ball. Yeah, and what I was saying, you know, you've got to play that breakout shot with having insurance because you can't play it with it no. and hope to land on that red. There's too much going on Look there. Look at a clever shot Jordan's just played there. Very good. Just played the loss of turn and put... John McCallister in real trouble now. Yeah, and that's that's where I think Sheppy has has the advantage. I think he's very, very clever tactically at this rule set. And this I, think, I think sometimes he gets a bit of a slightly unfair reputation as a as a bit of a mercurial talent who goes for everything and all the rest of it. He's yeah. very, very clever. He is. I mean, you know, look, look, Stevie Dempsey. Now he he's got an all-round game. He can play. He can play attacking, he can play, you know, he's got a great pull brain, very, very clever, which makes him very, very tough to beat. But like you say, you look at Jordan, because he's quite quick around the table, you don't think he plays any safety. Yeah, agreed. <coughs> but that one loose positional shot from McAllister's cost him. And it's going to be some tall order to get back in this for, for John. Yeah, looks like a very long way back now, doesn't it? As soon as Sheppy's in and amongst the balls, he looks frightening. 
does. It's, it'll be a seismic achievement for John McCullough to come back and win his match. It's just ridiculous. I don't know if seismic's a massive word, but I don't even think that does it justice, honestly. No. It really would be a huge, huge shock. Kashepi just does not look like giving an inch. 6 1 in front goes the Welsh Wizards. Well, here comes Jordan Shepherd to break off in frame eight. Needing just one more frame to book his ticket in the final. And, well, there's his first dry break. There's his first dry break. It's bit. John McCass will feel like that was due. He'd feel like it would wish it had come a bit earlier as well. I, th I think that's uh, absolutely correct. What can John McAllister do with these? Well, he has He's analysing these these two balls at the bottom of the table. Oh, it is a cliche, but you just have to play one frame at a time. If you're John McAllister here, you can't get too wrapped up in it. Can't beat a few cliches, Steve. <laughs> Wouldn't be a pull pull commentary without just the odd cliche here and there. No, absolutely not. I can tell you, over on table number two, as Sheppy comes to the table after the miss from John, this match might not have much left in it. There might not be much left in the women's quarter final as uh, Anne Louise Arkell is breaking off against Marion Jude at 4 2 in front. And she's made a ball off the break as well. So it could be a fantastic weekend for Anne Louise if she can get through that match. Well, she's certainly the underdog against the French world champion. Yeah, she knocked out last year's world champion the round before. She's uh, having quite the run. Well, he must be able to get to this ball that's nearest the pocket. Well, I thought, for, so when I initially looked at those balls, I thought reds, because of the four reds all round right by the black ball as well. Looks, if he could sort of surgically remove the other three, then you think it's the match is over, but... Now looking at it, he sailed in. Oh, these camera angles really do play tricks mm. on you, don't they? He's uh, he's got work to do here, though, Sheppy. That one's gone wrong. Yeah, he didn't want that kiss. So you're looking at screwing a cubal into the yellow to try and cannon it back into that middle. Now he's looking at the cut. Cut plant. Yeah, very cut. nice. Yellow oh. off the yellow. He's just bumped the black out as well. Out of that cluster, I mean, it was it, it was available, but it's certainly a lot, a lot more um, easier now where it is. Oh, look at this for a shot! Lovely. Nearly hit every ball on the table there. <laughs> that. that little shot. Well, when Jordan Shepherd is in the mood, he is just a delight to watch, and he has been a delight to watch in this match. He has. Just wants to slide up for the black into the centre. Play this with a tad of right hand side, I would suggest. Brilliant shot. Just oh. just queuing like an absolute dream, Steve. What a performance. What a performance from Jordan Shepherd. Twice a semi finalist this weekend. He gets to his first final of the weekend, and he is a man on a mission. What a performance from Jordan Shepherd.